Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Piyush and this is the first video in the series AZ Terraform. Let's give it a name. Let's call it 28 days of AZ Terraform because we'll be having 28 videos in the series end to end starting from the fundamentals of Terraform. So yes, this video will be talking about fundamentals of Terraform infrastructure as a code. Why do we need it? What are the benefits of using it? And then we'll be installing Terraform as well at the end of this video. So make sure you stay till the end. And as always, I would also need your support to help me promote this video, promote this series like you have always done. So the comment and like target of this video is 200 likes and 100 comments in the next 24 hours. I'm sure you can do that. So without wasting any time, let's start with the video. Okay, so here's the GitHub repository that will have all the details, source code, diagrams, notes, everything that we'll be discussing in this series. So we are over here in the first video and these are the topics that we'll be discussing. I have already gave you a brief overview about that and make sure you complete these prerequisites before that. Make sure you have Azure account. Make sure you know the fundamentals of Azure. I have added some links as well and then Docker and Kubernetes will be covering later in the series. So make sure you complete these topics as well before that. Okay, so let's get into that. Let's start with these topics now. Okay, so this is my first time using an iPad. So forgive me if I make some mistakes. I'm still learning and my handwriting, it sucks. I know that, so please bear with me. Okay, so let's start with what exactly is infra as a code. Okay, suppose you have a DevOps engineer, right? And that DevOps engineer will write some code that code will then help you provision servers. So basically that's what infrastructure as a code is. You transform your code into infrastructure or you write the code to provision the infrastructure. So that's what it is. Okay. And there are different tools uh, using which you can achieve this. So there is Terraform, which will be doing in detail. Then there is Pulumi. Then each cloud provider has their own set of uh, infrastructure as a code tool. For example, Azure has Azure ARM templates and Bicep. AWS has AWS CloudFormation. GCP has Deployment Manager or Infrastructure Manager or there are other tools as well, right? So this is what we'll be looking into. We'll be looking into Terraform, okay? So let's go ahead and let's understand why do we actually need infrastructure as a code? As an admin or as a DevOps engineer or whoever takes care of the infrastructure in your organization, infrastructure engineer, sysadmin, there could be anyone else. So that person or that team of person could directly log into AWS console and provision EC2 servers or any other infrastructure. Or if you are using Azure, you can use Azure portal, GCP console, and then there is Cloud Shell that you can use. Then there is Cloud Shell built in within Azure, within GCP and so on. So you can use those things as well. Like, and you can like easily provision infrastructure, right? Using entering some check boxes, some drop down boxes and entering some text over here. It's piece of cake. But if that is possible through these simple processes, simple services, why do actually we have to take the pain and write the code for it? There are many reasons for that. So let's look into a simple three tier architecture. So there is a web tier, there is an app tier, and then there is a database tier, right? So pretty basic, few services, nothing complex. I'll, I'll walk you through it. So there are like two servers that is part of a web tier. So these two servers are part of an auto scaling group. If you are using AWS, if you are using Azure, that could be a virtual machine scale set. If you are using GCP, that could be a managed instance group, MIG, right? So consider this as part of a virtual machine scale set. So it's created by a template. Whenever an instance goes down, an another instance will be created from the template. That's, that's it. Now they are backed by a, an external load balancer or a traffic manager. And 
whenever a user so let's say this is a user so whenever a user hits the dns or the load balancer endpoints the request will go to either of these servers okay similarly there is an internal load balancer that balances the traffic between the servers hosted on app tier again this is part of a virtual machine scale set or an auto scaling group or an mig okay let's take the example of azure only so this will be part of a virtual machine scale set and then the traffic will be redirected to to fetch some details from that database so it will be going to the master database so here is the master here is the slave okay this is a highly available managed database service let's say so we have created multiple servers we have to create multiple servers so one two three four okay so four servers over here and then we have to create one external load balancer one internal load balancer and add the backend to it create health props create auto scaling or virtual machine scale set then we have multiple db servers and we have to join them together so this is pretty basic so consider you do all these manually through a cloud shell or through the portal azure portal and it will take you approximate two hours let's say now this is fine if you have just this simple architecture but this is not the case this is not the scenario that you face in an organization so let's talk about enterprise let's talk how do we do that in enterprise now instead of that one single environment we have six different environment okay still we are taking example of a small three tier architecture with minimum configuration okay so let's say you have a dev environment you have a uat a system integration test pre production disaster recovery and prod environment you have six different environment which is similar to what we have seen so far right now how much time it will take so let's say 2 hours into 6 12 hours that's what it's going to take but let's talk a more about it because we need to understand right why we actually using terraform or infrastructure as a code so let's dig a little deeper into that so there are more challenges to it it's not just that so let's say you have you have not a single person who is doing it but let's say you have a team couple of folks doing it so it takes you nine hours per day just to provision the infrastructure now the challenges are first is time it takes a lot of time to just provision the infrastructure when will actually be start working on it when we'll be doing testing development um and uh, load testing performance testing when when will we do that a uh, lot many people require to do this job uh, usually it will like pre infrastructure as a code era there used to be a team to just provision and manage the infrastructure then a huge cost is applied to it because if you are spending nine hours a day in provisioning the infrastructure and after that your uh, team will start working on it you won't be decommissioning the server at the end of the day so it will be running throughout the night even though someone is not working on it it will accumulate cost and if you again want to make sure that you provision the infrastructure you know at the start of the day and decommission it at the end of the day so the time will go twice right nine hours to provision the infrastructure and let's say two three hours or four hours to decommission every single resource of it now this will also be a repetitive step your infrastructure team or whoever is managing it they'll be doing it same task every single day and it is prone to human error because you are manually doing it manually doing provisioning infrastructure drag and drop click check boxes text text boxes and so on so there are chances of manual error you might miss some configuration or you might accidentally use some values that you are not supposed to do then it is insecure there isn't a lot of inbuilt security the role based access or the permissions it's kind of messy over here and last but not the least you will always face this issue it works on my machine you might have heard it if you are a working professional you might have heard this statement a lot of time that it is working on my machine so what what happens is you know whenever developers write a code 
no hate to developers just sharing an example so whenever developer write in code and then code gets promoted from one environment to another environment let's say the code breaks in production now you go back to developer and ask uh, you know this is the bug that i am facing or the code is not working as expected the developer will come back with this statement could come back with this, this statement that it works on my machine so there could be some issues with the production environment so that person is not entirely wrong yes there could be some issues with the production environment and why because all these environments were provisioned manually there is no check that have been put in place that could make sure that these environment are consistent that these are the identical copy of each other so you might be using some other let's say java version over here in the dev environment and a different version in the prod environment or some configuration file will be missing or there were some patch applied in production environment that was not propagated to the uh, lower environments there could be many more issues right because we are not using a standard process to provision the infrastructure from a template that's that's the main root cause of it right but there could be these many challenges that could happen if we do it manually okay and that's where infrastructure as a code comes into the picture that's where terraform comes into the picture so let's have a look how terraform overcome these challenges okay so first it it helps you automate the infrastructure and not just the provisioning of it yes you can provision the infrastructure but you can also automate the destruction of infrastructure when it is not needed to save the cost it is also helpful in the maintenance so whenever you need to make an update to the existing infrastructure you can do that seamlessly with terraform okay so it helps you then save resources save cost improve security and so on now it also helps you save time because now you can automate everything instead of someone going manually and running all those things now it works on my machine doesn't really a big concern over here now because you have now the consistency between different environments they are identical and you have to write it once deploy many times you can use the same template to deploy as many as infrastructure as you want you just need to make some changes to the variables and that should be it okay and you can also track your changes because your terraform code will be stored on a git repository or a source code management system right so you can track the changes you can uh, control the changes based on the pull request you can establish a review process and it's it's much more uh, improved process now and it makes your life easy you know uh, you don't have to worry about all the infrastructure related issues okay so let's have a look at how terraform works okay as i've told you like all the terraform files will be stored in a git repository so here is the git repository the files uh, that terraform supports is uh, with the .tf extension and then there is .json extension as well we'll look that uh, later on but for now just uh, remember that all the files with .tf extension at uh, terraform auto automatically supports that now um, you have either a manual process of provisioning or destruction of infrastructure through terraform or you can have a ci cd tool in place that takes care of you so let's say like either of the process you are using a devops engineer or a tool uh, you know initiate the request to run the terraform commands okay and then these are the commands that goes into the picture terraform in it to initialize the provider plugins i'll i'll share more details about the provider but just remember this is to initialize terraform then validate some basic syntax check it it will do in the terraform files if it is valid or not then you actually run the terraform plan which will show you the desired state of your infrastructure like it it's sort of a dry run that you will do with the terraform once you do that you will be shown like what all the resources will be created or destroyed or or updated after you run the terraform apply and terraform apply will finally make that changes to the infrastructure and then your infrastructure will be provisioned right so this all step could be automated using ci cd tool or just you know a devops engineer who has to run only these commands 
or it could be part of a script anything but still far more better than running it manually full time the same way let's say at the end of the day or when you are done doing your development testing whatever on the infrastructure to save the cost you have to destroy the infrastructure again the same thing you can manually run terraform destroy command or you can have a ci cd tool pipeline in place that could do the destruction for you and that's it so that's how terraform makes our life easy okay now let's go to our terminal window and let's try to install terraform okay so terraform installation is pretty basic just a couple of commands and just be done with it okay so here are like there is the installation guide i will share the link in the github repository everything will be there so over here we have different options different operating systems uh, mac os windows linux freeb freebsd openbsd solaris and so on right you can choose whichever operating system you are using i'm using mac so i can use the brew packet manager to install it so brew tap hashicorp and then brew install hashicorp terraform okay or you can download the binaries as well based on the operating system that you have based on the architecture that you have and you can install it if you want to check which version you are using so if you can go back and uh, run uname hyphen a i think yeah so here's how you can check so i'm using macbook so it's uh, darwin kernel version is this and it's arm 64 system so based on that you can check and install the binaries as well if you want okay so i'm just gonna copy these commands and let's paste it over here so it's brew tap hashicorp tap brew install hashicorp tap hashicorp tap whatever yeah so i'll hit enter and it says da 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 da, da installing terraform and that's it it's done now if you face any issue while installing uh, terraform because i faced it during the first time uh, on mac as well so i have shared some details in the github repository check it out i'm sure it will be helpful so let me just check if my terraform has been installed properly or not so if i do terraform hyphen version so i'm using terraform 1.9.8 on darwin arm 64 and here's the provider version because i've used it earlier that's why uh, for you it won't be showing the provider version so i'll discuss more about provider soon because in this video we just wanted to cover the fundamentals so that's it for this video uh, by the end of this video i'm sure now you know the fundamentals of terraform infrastructure as a code why do we need it and you should be able to install terraform on your machine if you face any issue let me know in the comment section below or join our discord community and provide the details over there someone will definitely gonna help you and make sure you complete the comments and like target i will see you soon with the next video in the next video we'll be looking into terraform providers and have a good day happy learning thank you so much for watching